Okay, here we hit uh, in Victory in the Pacific, what's going to be the turn ending in January 1944. You can see the Japanese got some of their air power back. They're still not matched with the U.S. power, and that's an important factor because uh, now the U.S. has a foothold both into Indonesia, of course, territories here, the Marshalls and South Pacific that they own. Uh, if they can get the Philippines, I don't think they can reach though. No, not this turn. So there's not a lot they can get to. They could get to Johnston Island and uh, then be able to exert some ground-based air in the Hawaiian Islands next turn. But there's no other real uh, clear openings for the Marines to, to, to add to the situation. Um, also, we have huge, huge quantities of carriers here, new battleships. Right now, the tide has completely changed, and it's really just up to how much can the Japanese keep, how far ahead can they keep themselves? Because as soon as it goes over this zero mark, it's game over. It's just then a question of how, how well the U.S. has done. After commitment of air power, you can see the U.S. actually threw some air power into areas they don't even expect trouble in. They left one open, the Bay of Bengal. They also left the Indian Ocean open that the Japanese can reach. The Indian Ocean doesn't give the U.S. any points, though, so that's not really a risk. This is only one point for the U.S. So again, the Japanese can't get control of it, so all they can do is deprive the point from the uh, U.S. or Allied player. That makes it less valuable. Oh, I got another air unit here I'm going to throw into Indonesia. See if I can get that killed. Um, but yeah, right now the battle for Indonesia looks very, very bad for the uh, Japanese. They've got a lot of air units in there. They may not want to commit their carrier there. They've got to make their choice where they want to defend now, what they want to do. Um, they didn't throw any ground-based air here in the Hawaiian Islands. They're probably going to lose that. I, I put one cruiser out there with the hope, you know, hey, maybe the U.S. wouldn't allocate for it. But if I don't allocate more to it, the U.S. can get it very cheaply. Maybe just throw a, a battleship in there or something, and it's over. So it is kind of this difficult decision. Do I want to go all in over in Indonesia where the U.S. actually can get all of their carriers. They can get all of their carriers pretty much anywhere they like that's contested. And that's really the problem here. Wherever I put my carrier as the Japanese, it's probably good, our carriers, I have a couple of them left, uh, and one being repaired, it's probably going to be where they die. And maybe the best place is over here where I have that ground-based air. Okay, the U.S. is leaving the Central Pacific uncontested, but they're going into the Hawaiian Islands just with surface units, really, and to get this Marine into Johnston Island. That's more than enough to handle whatever the Japanese put into play here. Uh, they upgraded and threw a battleship in here just to improve that chance. Over here, major, major action on the Marianas. Uh, take away a couple of points from the Japanese and put them in a position where they're better able to capture it because remember there's no once there's no Japanese flag there's a bonus there there's a carrier there which is one of the reasons I went in even though there's an air unit there I went in with uh, superior air power uh, and the victorious in there to fight the uh, land-based air over here the major carrier uh, elements are in here to help finish this off. Now right now I have the advantage probably in terms of air flotillas. It's hard to tell because I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14 dice to 12 for the Japanese, but the Japanese, you, you would think, well that's not that big a difference, but the Japanese have uh, the advantage or the disadvantage of their units being a little less sturdy. Well, not really. Their units are as sturdy as the U.S. ones, but they do more. They get more dice for their sturdiness, right? They get more dice per unit, so their losses will accumulate a little more quickly. And the Japanese did not put a whole bunch of carriers in here. They only have one uh, little guy there. They got one little guy over here, and well, 
the U.S. is of course attracted to hunt down those carriers. Now I gotta choose the uh, location for this sucker. I'm tempted to put it here, try to knock those Marines out, or the battleship. If I knock the battleship out, the Marines will land. If I knock the Marines out, then the U.S. will not get the air cover there. But I think it's a lost cause there, so... Uh, um, it's always a tough choice where to throw that sucker in. You know, I could take the point away here, but otherwise I think the best thing to do is go after one of those big carriers, and I'll take my shot in Indonesia. I did want to take a moment to point out the marine usage. I threw some marines in here with the intention of uh, reinforcing the Philippines if need be. That's not important right now. The U.S. didn't throw any Marines there. In fact, they couldn't get that far. Uh, their Marines are here in the South Pacific to defend Lai, but they can't really do it because the Japanese can choose the, Philo the uh, Indonesia first, and if they get a landing off, they drive away the U.S. Uh, land-based air. That's got to be their goal at this point, really. If they can get away with that, uh, a quick landing on Lai, well, then they end up having the advantage over in Indonesia by a lot. Yeah, maybe not that much. There's a lot of carriers here. <laughs> the U.S. gets lucky. They're able to get a day battle. The Japanese try to make their landing. And, boy, they get Ken Ho's there. Uh, two air flotillas taken down. The Marines taken down. Heavy, heavy uh, emphasis on the Marines. Two aircraft carriers shot at it. Two of the big aircraft carriers. Uh, battleship went down, and, but the Japanese sub managed to hit the wasp and take that down. So now, now it doesn't really look like a pleasing battle to fight. Uh, I don't have a lot of ground-based air to support myself, but the problem is I don't have any non-ground-based air, and the poor Yamato has taken uh, seven hits total in this one. I think I gotta stick around in order to keep my ground-based air flying because if I try running I'm at a disadvantage. I'm at a disadvantage no matter what but at least I can maybe score a couple of these uh, fast carriers. Mixed, uh, mixed effect there I was able to get the Yamato out of there and one of the cruisers, only one light cruiser or one of the, the uh, Japanese cruisers managed to go down, uh, managed to be sunk now I'm in the position where all I have is ground-based air. And the question is, do I want to pull away with it or do I want to take some bonus shots on carriers that I might not get otherwise? I'm going to go for the carriers. It probably means I'm doomed out of my ground-based air and that's going to cause long-term problems. There's no question there. But not for next turn. And two turns from there, I get it back. So next turn doesn't look too bad. I'm probably not going to need my ground-based air to the same extent as what I'm kind of thinking. I'm not sure. I'm not going to be able to prevent the U.S. from getting control of Indonesia, but they're going to have to move Marines into this area to be able to hit the Philippines and gain that and gain the leverage that that gives you on the Marianas. So I'm going to stick around and try to do some damage. Okay, well... The Japanese stuck around for quite a while. They lost another plane, I think. One of them is still damaged. They did pull out eventually. Uh, but they did take down the Bellow Wood, did some damage over here to the Cowpens, and you can see they chased off the other carriers. Chasing them off doesn't do much. It's only damage, which prevents this one from being of any value because it's taken damage equal to its... Uh, it's a armor rating, so it's not even really a carrier until it repairs. Pretty much have to repair that. But taking one down is definitely worthwhile, worth trading an air, a ground-based air. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But uh, the results didn't work out as well as one might have hoped. Uh, got a lot of five-pointers. There were a lot of day battles where nobody found each other in there, too. All right, we got some more... What, one more battle? Two more battles to do. The battle for the Marianas winds up with the U.S. Uh, taking 
not control, but taking control away from the Japanese. Cost for the for the Japanese a couple of heavy a couple of battleships, Marines in the air unit. However, the U.S. lost a carrier, just a light one. Um, not a great trade-off, but it's opened this up so that it's mobile. I can pass through it from here, from whatever. It makes the Japanese islands close to being able to be taken. And given that I'm getting Indonesia this turn, I'm really going to be taking the majority of the Japanese points away from them very quickly. They might have some forces here, but I think there's going to be a big battle at the Japanese islands to try to swing this sucker around very quickly. Um, one thing I noted, I forgot to remove last turn, or this turn, uh, one of the carriers. This whole OOB with the removals, etc., it, it's always caused me problems. The Japanese one's simple, but the U.S. one has always caused me difficulties. We saw I got in trouble bringing air units in too early. I got in trouble now not withdrawing something, uh, at, at the wrong time. It just confuses me. Pictorial uh, things always do. I would much rather have just a chart that I read off of, I think. I, 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 a list that I read off of, probably. Um, when I see something like that, it's difficult for me. Anyway, we got one more battle here, down here in the Hawaiian Islands. That's not going to be much. The Japanese are going to try to get away. They probably will lose their ship. Actually, chances were very low they were going to lose their ship. They went for a day battle, and, well, there can be no day battle, and then took a withdrawal, and they're faster than anything the U.S. has. The U.S. is going to land here and grab Johnson Island, though, so that in addition to successfully patrolling the area, they gain control of the potential air base. So it's five points in favor of the Allies at this point, and we see the decline is happening, the automatic decline, as it were. So... What can we speculate from that? Well, we have three more turns. If those three more turns were to stand steady, and the U.S. is certainly going to do better than that, it would be 15 points, so the Japanese would be ahead by four. So they still have some chance. I'd say it's pretty low. It looks very likely that the U.S. is going to gain. And I think essentially what happened was I made too big an effort too big an expenditure with the Japanese. It's fairly easy to get yourself to 29. The problem is holding yourself there. Now, my head is still sort of remembering that that uh, optional system that I'm used to, the one that causes these little map markings here, which allows the Japanese to take the POC above 29, at least in terms of how I'm kind of used to playing. I can't get that out of my head. Um, so it's very hard for me not to try to grab, say, the Hawaiian Islands. <laughs> it's not worth it. That's the point. Same with Australia. Uh, if, if you grab Australia, it seems like, oh, I took all of Australia with no problem. Well, yeah, but now it's harder to win this game. And that, that's one of the things you got to keep in mind is you don't really necessarily want to take, you don't want to expand that perimeter as far as you possibly can. You want to expand it to the point where it gets you to the 29 points and some extra points were generated that the Japanese essentially had to lose some ships to get that extra extra uh, advantage. And here we are on May 44 turn. Uh, many, many more U.S. carriers showing up. See the stack there. Bunch of little Japanese carriers too. These don't have the circled attack factor because the Japanese pilot quality has decreased so much by this point. We also see the U.S. now has its uh, submarine instead of the Japanese one. And this time I remembered to remove British ships. In one case I had to replace one because they're out of carriers. So they just gave up a cruiser instead. Alright, well we'll see where this goes. Everything except the raiding ships has been put out, well, in the I-boat. Um, and what do we have? Well, the Japanese look like they're continuing to fight over Indonesia. Now, they've got some air cover over the Marianas and uh, Japan itself. They didn't bother protecting the Central Pacific. That's not worth as many points to them. They've got to maintain their points uh, somewhat here. <laughs> but... 
you know, honestly, the U.S. doesn't really need to do all that well, but they'd like to do as well as they can within the circumstances. I don't really believe in, ah, oh, yeah, let's see if we can edge this out to a four-point victory or something. I want a, a fairly significant victory, and in that case, I don't want to just grab what's kind of easy and leave the Japanese to holding uh, what they can. I do want to challenge them straight up. I think I've got a strong advantage in terms of ships, and I want to get as rack up as good a score as I can with the U.S. So I think we're going to see a fairly audacious use of the U.S. forces here, although probably not as far as going into the Japanese islands. Although, if they don't defend it more than this, maybe. That's just one, uh, one ground-based air there. I could throw some carriers in with a small squadron from, say, down here, and be able to take that away from the Japanese, as it were. Not going for the Japanese islands, instead piled in pretty heavily in the Marianas in Indonesia. Also, some carriers here in the Central Pacific to make sure I can handle the Japanese carrier there, and even a carrier out here in the North Pacific to try to take that out. Um, the only landings available are from here in the Marianas, but the Americans and Japanese put uh, ground troops in play there. Uh, the goal there is holding the Philippines for whatever value that is, and Saipan for that matter too. If the Americans can grab that, they get their air base over here. They've already got one in Indonesia, so they don't really need uh, the Philippines in particular. That puts the Japanese in kind of a tricky position. They've got three guys to cover. They can't they could put a dude in each, but then the U.S. can knock out and take either one. And whichever one they can't cover, the U.S. could conceivably take over. So, it doesn't look to me like uh, the Japanese are going to be able to prevent the U.S. from having air power over the Marianas next turn. Although the task force's optional rule gives some kind of nice uh, historical feel to it, it can be annoying as all hell. It's one of the few. Th it's one of the few places in this game where the die rolling gets really stupid, crazy, and it's one of the reasons probably not to use it. Um, here in the North Pacific, I just continuously had both sides rolling. The Japanese wanted a night battle. The Americans wanted a day battle. They're even, so they both get a roll. The side that doesn't want it goes into hiding. The the side that gets what it didn't want. Uh, and so the other side needs to roll a one or a two to find them and get the battle that they want. Eventually the net effect was a cruiser on each side. Mixed blessing here in the Central Pacific. Uh, the Japanese managed to take down two American carriers, but they lost their own actually in a night battle. Uh, they drove away the one patrolling ship, so nobody's going to control the Central Pacific. But that means there's no safety. It, it's a route into the Japanese islands still. But it does mean that they have a base there still, which they would have anyway. Uh, not a lot that it means. It takes a... Yeah, it doesn't even give victory points. The only thing that would have helped is if the Japanese could hold control of it, and they got driven to base. And at the end of the turn, the Americans won both the big battles. They used one of their Marines to land and take the Philippines, because that wouldn't convert. Is that a terribly big thing? Well, they did want air power over here. They're not going to get that because they don't control it already. So they're not going to get truck or Saipan. They could have landed at Saipan, but they wanted to make sure that they held this. They've pretty much wiped out everything the Japanese threw there. There's a couple of planes that got away. Um, damaged ship here. But for the most part, everything, the Musashi, all those carriers, it's all gone. Uh, a lot of it in the pursuit round. Basically, the Japanese broke off at one point, and well, two heavy battleships chased the Musashi. The carriers went after the Japanese, uh, well, a, along with cruisers, and, and the repulse here went after the Japanese carrier. You can see Japanese haven't lost all, well, they lost all their carriers, but they haven't lost all that much more than the Americans did this turn in terms of carriers, but the Americans outproduce them. Uh, attrition is perfectly fine for the Americans. Allies gained a total of nine points this turn. If they can keep that pace up, that's 18 points. They're only 15 
down in the hole, so they pretty much have a victory assured. The only real question is how much better can they do than that? Uh, three points over the POC. While that might be fine at the beginning of the game to try to say, yeah, oh, yeah, it's about balanced. Um, you know, I'll take that. Well, it doesn't really feel like enough in this situation. Japan's Navy is pretty much destroyed. They're out of carriers, I think, again. They got two more coming in next turn. But uh, yeah, they're just not able to match what the U.S. can throw into the way. The U.S. also has Marines available to grab Okinawa and begin using air support in the Japanese islands. This is working out, other than the fact that Pearl Harbor fell, too close to the historical type situation here. All right, up it goes. We'll have one more video for the end.